So fear and panic peaked last week, as you guys can see in the fear and greed index with the China Bitcoin ban news headlining the tour de FUD. Over the weekend, a lot of rumors and speculation continued to circulate this crypto space as we hit another low of $31,000. But you can see exactly where we bounced here on the bottom of our falling wedge where it took off to where we currently are at a possible breakout point. So is the bottom in? Is the reversal about to play out? We're going to be talking about that plus a possible short squeeze scenario that can take us back up to 50K. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel is to empower you guys with the knowledge and resources to help you get to that next level. So guys, make sure to smash the like button on this video. If you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So as you guys can see, the total crypto market cap is up to $1.59 trillion, which is a 20% increase over the last 24 hours. So if we take a look at the total market cap right now, you can see that from the top of the market cap. So the top that we were at was 2.577 trillion. It dropped by 53% from the top to the bottom. So from the bottom to where we are currently right now, we've gone up 30%. So we've gained another 361 point eight five five billion dollars into the market basically over the last day so over the last 24 hours you can see that we're finally seeing some green again across the markets bitcoin is up 12 and a half percent today ethereum is up 27.8 or 0.6 now but 27 percent on the day guys binance is up 36 percent cardano up 25 doge is still not really moving too much only up eight percent today XRP moving back up 23% and Polkadot up 35% on the day. Some of the crazier moves are of course Polygon Matic that is up over 100% on the day. However, in the last seven days, you guys can see we're still basically red here. The fear and greed index is at a all-time low at extreme fear. Well, I don't know if it's an all-time low, but it's at 10, which is the lowest we've seen it in a very long time. If we go up to, to the top to, to look at the graph here, you can see that we've been going lower and lower and lower. If I put a full year, you see that this is a lo the lowest that we've been. If I go over to max, you will see that 10 is the lowest we've been since March of 2020 when the pandemic plunged the entire market basically. So if we come on over to the daily time frame here, you can see the very, very clear falling wedge pattern that we currently have here in the market. We've been talking about it for about a week now. It's still there. So the falling wedge pattern is still intact. And notice something here. We're starting to get a push, right? We're getting a push up out of this pattern. So this could be the beginning of our move back up. Um, that would mean that uh, 30K here and 31K was the bottom. This could also be the beginning of a W pattern. Um, basically, that would be, you know, the, the W like this, the bounce up, then the second bottom. This would be kind of like the double bottom, then a bounce up like that. And that would lead us to continue up higher. So that's also a reversal pattern there. And now basically we're just waiting to see if we get that confirmation close above this breakout zone here for Bitcoin outside of this falling wedge reversal pattern, right? So this is a reversal signal if we get the breakout here. So what can we expect if this does close outside and above this, this um, falling wedge pattern? What's next? What's to expect here? So the next level is going to be $40,000. I would say 40K is going to be the next level, but that might not be the most important level. The most important level here might actually be 
$42,000. I believe that above $42,000, because it was such a big, as you guys can see here, it was a big um, component for support there. You guys see that it was support here as well. It's also a Fibonacci level. It was also a previous all time high support again here. So it's definitely a big point of interest because it's such an important level. I believe that if we go above 42K, that could cause a short squeeze. So you guys can see here that a short squeeze is a rapid increase in the price of a stock owning primarily to an excess of short selling of a stock rather than underlying fundamentals. So as you guys can see here, the way a short squeeze works is once we get a breakout where we get to the short squeeze breakout level, which I believe is currently around that $42,000 mark, it can cause a parabolic rise in the short term, right? And this is caused because short traders, people that are short the position, um, they start getting margin called, they start closing their positions, they start hitting stop losses, all of that basically, which is what happened to us here, right? This was basically a long squeeze. That's why these candles are so big because a lot of people that were long got squeezed and basically all their long calls and their long positions they were over leveraged in had to either they had to close it out or they had to they got um, liquidated which closed out the position so they ended up selling the positions things like of that nature right so above that 42k level because it's such a big level for us there i think that that could lead to the breakout back to that 50k level of course first we have to we have to get through 48,000 but I believe a breakthrough 42K could lead us right back to 48. Getting above 48 will get us back above 50. And that basically at that point, we're back to where we started, right? We're back in our norm normal trading zone and we would be able to get back to 60K at that point. Now, it's not it's not going to be easy. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen. It, it might not happen for some time. But I do think that that's something that could happen. That's the, the bullish case scenario right now. If you look back at the previous falling wedges that we had here, you can see that once we broke out, we did have nice moves up to the upside. Um, this one broke out here around that $50,000 range and went all the way back up to 60K. This one here broke out around $45,000 and ended up running all the way up to $62,000 before it took a break and then it ended up running to our previous all-time high up here 65k here you can see a similar pattern as well when we broke out of around that 30 33,032 range ended up running all the way up to 58,500 and that eventually led us higher to our our current all-time high so it's definitely something that we can see again right you know where it's the same pattern here we've seen the same pattern multiple times this could be every time you know since this boron has started every time we've seen this pattern it's been a reversal pattern and it's been a pattern saying that they're running the bull the bears are running out of gas basically and they're ready for a move back up um the bulls have taken control again and that's what's happened every time. So if we go off of history, right? If we base, it, base this off of history, what's happened in the past when we've seen the same move, that's what the chart is currently telling us. Now, of course, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee. It's not a 100%. It, it's just a probability play, right? So um, the theory on this pattern, like we always do, we always I like to educate you guys on the theory of trading and theory of patterns and, and different things that go on in the market. So the theory of this one is that this is a reversal pattern. This does mean that the bears are getting tired. They're getting exhausted. You can see that uh, if you look back on the daily, the volume has been going down. So that's also another sign for reversal. And it means that um, the bulls are ready to take over here and push the prices back up. So when you put this together with a possible short squeeze at $42,000, that basically gives us a possible target here to get back above 50K and possibly be able to retest that $60,000 area, which has been a big resistance for us and the previous all-time high. So I know you guys are wondering, are we taking any trades yet? Because lately we've only been dollar cost averaging as a price has been falling, we've been dollar cost averaging 
on the way down. Remember, we told you right now we were only buying for long term positions. We're just stacking up sats at its since it's currently at a discount. We just wanted to, to stack up as much as possible for the run back up because we really do believe in Bitcoin in the long term. Even if we have to wait years, it's fine. We are OK with buying as the dip goes down. We will stack up and when eventually it does go up, then we're prepared. But Jay, like you're just telling people to buy the dip while it's falling and that's dumb. They're just going to keep losing money. Stop telling people to catch falling knives. That's not good advice. First of all, this is not financial advice. Secondly, what we always say to do is to dollar cost average. Dollar cost averaging your way down as the price dips has proven to be the most successful strategy, the most simplest strategy for anyone that's trying to get into the market at better prices. We did the same thing last year during the March 2020 pandemic when everybody was fearful, when everybody was scared, everybody was saying that it was over, that we were all doomed. We bought the dip. We told people that what we were doing and how we were doing it, dollar cost averaging our ways down and that they could do it too because we recommended that was the best strategy, the simplest strategy for someone that's not a day trader. So anyone that did that during that time is in profit by a lot. And we believe in the long term, again, by doing the strategy, you will be in profit. Again, this is not advice. This is just our personal opinion. This is my perspective. Don't have to do it if you don't want to. It's okay. Stay poor. If you're scared, go to church or put your money in the index funds. Make your 8% returns annually and have peace of mind. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But Jay, so you always say hodl. Does that mean you never take profits? Incorrect again. We always tell people to take profits as the price goes up and buy as the price goes down. What we do is take profits as the price goes up to new all time highs. We build a cash position, which is part of our portfolio, which we have told you guys in many different videos. And then as the price falls, we use that cash position that we have ready that we took profits with and we buy more Bitcoin. Now, the majority of our Bitcoin we bought long term. So we bought at prices that are very, very far away from where we currently are right now. And that part of our portfolio is for long term for the next 10 years. We don't plan on selling now our cash part of the portfolio, which it makes up around 10. It could be anywhere between five to 15 percent at any given time. It depends. We use that liquid cash to buy dips. And then as the price goes back up to all time highs, we take profits and we build, we rebuild that cash position. We try to maintain it between five to 10, 15% of our portfolio. And we use that cash again when there's another dip. And we just continue doing this over and over and over the long run. This continues to build us up our Bitcoin portfolio bigger and bigger. Any altcoins that we're buying the same thing. We just continue making that position bigger. And then of course we have a separate portfolio just for trading, which is about another 10 to 20% of our entire portfolio. There's a method to the madness guys. All right, guys. So we've covered our thoughts on Bitcoin and the entire crypto market. In reality, Bitcoin is the entire crypto market, right? So and our thoughts on it, where we think it's going, the possibilities for the next move in the reversal. And now we're going to talk about some possible short term uh, trades that we're going to be looking for to take with some leverage. Now, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Now, let's all go ahead and smash the like button at the same time. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Boom. All right, guys, so let's talk about some trade setups that we are watching here. So the first level and really one of the only levels I'm currently looking at right now is the same level I gave you guys on Friday's video. I want a break above forty thousand dollars. A break above forty thousand should take us at least to forty two thousand. Obviously, it's not a given, but it's pretty secure, pretty secure of a trade if we get a, a break in confirmation above 40,000. So that's the, the trade I'm looking for 
this week right now. And then my second trade would of course be above $42,000. That would be the next trade I'm looking to take right now if we go backwards if we go down i'm not really looking for any trades because we could come back down and test the top of this falling wedge before continuing up that is a possibility that is something that prices like to do a lot i'm not really buying anything down here for short-term trades i am buying for long-term trades so remember that Anywhere between 30,000 to 32,000, I am buying for short term trades. Below 30,000, I'm also dollar cost averaging my way down. But that's all for long term trades. For short term, I'm only entering above 40 and 42 here for Bitcoin. For Ethereum, I've gotten a little bit uh, riskier. Uh, as you guys can see, 2,500 is a big level for Ethereum here. Um, so I've actually been taking short term leverage trades here at 2500 today, really. The next trades I'm looking for here, I'll still be using that 2500 level to continue, you know, enter if we go below it again and it goes back above, I'll enter again with the momentum to the upside. If we continue up, the next trade I'd probably be looking at is possibly above 2800 and then of course above $3,000. 3,000 will be the, that big, big level there. So above 3,000, I'm happy to take trades there. Above 2,800, I'm taking trades, but I'm still risking under 1% of my uh, trading portfolio there. Above 3,000, I'll be risking a little bit more. I'm willing to risk two to 3% of my Ethereum portfolio. All right, guys, that is pretty much it. I know it's been a crazy weekend and it's been a crazy, week really but things are looking are starting to look a little bit better um we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here so we just gotta stay positive guys we gotta stay with it i'm continuing to dollar cost average if the prices go down if not then i'm starting to look for um short-term trade setups as the prices go up and looking for that bounce back man to to previous highs so we just got to take it day by day dollar by dollar and uh, we will get there guys the bull run is not over thank you guys so much for tuning in make sure to smash that like button guys on this video it helps us out a ton make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and guys pay attention because we're doing giveaways still so pay attention most of the giveaways you have to you're gonna have to put a comment on the video so guys comment on this video for a chance to win our giveaway alrighty guys so I will see you on tomorrow's video as always peace and love